of all, good morning to all of you. It's an honor for me to be able to say a few words this morning on this, the 100th anniversary of this November holiday. By being here today and taking time to reflect on the service and sacrifice of veterans, they're demonstrating your patriotism, and we thank you. We celebrate this day by honoring all veterans. That's all the men and women who have worn the uniform of any of the five branches of the military. Whether you enlisted, or drafted, or you volunteered for the draft. You went where you were needed, did what you were told, and you taught the value of discipline, hard work, and respect. I can tell you from personal experience that serving and defending our country was the greatest privilege of my life. There is no greater Wherever we are on Veterans Day, we can do no less than pause for one small moment to reflect upon the more than one million heroes who did not return to us. Those who gave what President Lincoln called the last full measure of devotion. Their ultimate sacrifice serves as a constant reminder of the cost of freedom and the hope of a safer, more peaceful world. Looking back on my own time in the service, I can only tell you some of my experience. And I'm sure there are others out here who can relate. A friend of mine and I volunteered for the draft in the fall of 1966. We were 19 years old and tired of waiting every month for that letter from our friends and neighbors at the draft board. At least we had the peace of mind of knowing we had until February the 1st at that time, we boarded a bus to Fort Knox for basic training. At the end of basic, they held back five men, two of us from Aurora, out of 254 trainees, to wait for the next graduating class, at which time they sent a plane load of troops to Fort Polk, Louisiana, for infantry training. We were taken in the pitch black of night some 70 odd miles in cattle cars an area of Fort Polk called Tiger Land. It was the perfect place to train for jungle warfare. After training at Polk, we were sent home for 20 days leave and then flown halfway around the world to a country called Vietnam. When the doors opened on our jet, the first thing that hit us was the overwhelming stench and the unbearable heat. That combination literally took your breath. I think it was at that moment that a plane load of GIs thought to themselves, what have I gotten myself in? I knew this next year was going to be a long one, and that's if I made it through it all. The only consolation was, you were not alone, you were with your brothers. Out in the field, we were all brothers. It didn't matter who you were or where you came from. There was a bond between us far greater than color or religion. You watch my back and I'll watch yours. And maybe, just maybe, we'll make it home. That was the number one priority for us all. But it didn't work out for everyone. The trip to the wall shows that. I've been to the wall a number of times over the years and I see their faces. we had with each other. We fought in triple canopy jumps, other rice paddies, tall elephant grass in the streets of Saigon during the Tet Offensive of 68. We were brothers. That's just a little of my story. As I stand here today and look around me, I, I see many veterans from different branches. civilization and they rescued 
saw democracy challenged and they defended it. They saw our rights endangered and they sought to restore them. According to historians, Dwight D. Eisenhower said that he was prouder of being a soldier than he was of being the President of the United States. Oh, the times they are a-changing. Sadly today, there are fewer than 10% of Americans who can claim the title of veteran. That's one reason we should celebrate this day and honor those who have contributed so much to the cause of world peace and the preservation of our way of life. I also believe Veterans Day is a day for all Americans. I'd personally like to thank all the families of veterans for their support, love, and understanding. Many of my generation had a difficult time trying to readjust to living in the real world again after returning home from that war. I know my wife went through some tough times with me, and I'm sure other vets' wives and family members can relate to that as well. And so my fellow veterans, let us take this day to thank those who are dear to us. In closing, I'd like to paraphrase Winston Churchill when he said, never has so much been owed by so many to so few. God bless America. God bless those who love, guard, and defend our precious freedom. I thank you.